Hi there, and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian, and today we're going to look at the HYM430 SPER roller mower. So I'm going to remove the lawn mower from its packaging. Now take great care doing this, as quite often people will damage the cables that run from the handle to the mower at this stage. Probably best that you get some assistance to lift it out of the box and to remove any loose items out of the box before you lift the mower itself. So I've laid the contents of the packaging out on the table. First of all we have the mower itself with the upper handle attached to it by the cables that I mentioned earlier that we've got to be very careful with. Then we have the lower handle. I'll put that to one side. The grass bag, a little bit of assembly needed there, we shall go into that. The user's manual. Now I do recommend that you read the user's manual thoroughly before use. Then we have a small bag with the associated handles and knobs that go with the machine. And then we have the battery charger for charging the battery. So let's get on with the assembly then. Step one is going to be to fit the lower handle to the mower. The parts you're going to need are these two short bolts that you'll find in the bag and two of these black knobs and bolt assemblies with washers. Now you will need, ideally, a 13mm spanner for this, or an adjustable spanner will do. I'm going to use a 13mm spanner. So before we attempt to fit the lower handle, I'm going to move the upper handle from its resting position on the mower and bring it back out of the way. And I also need to get these cables out of the way as well. So the cables are now out of the way of the two mounting brackets for the lower handle. Okay. Now you'll see the lower handle can go on this way or this way. But you'll notice that it's got this what I call a pigtail here which is a pull start cord holder. And you want it to go on the side of the pull start on the lawnmower. So this lower handle fits on the outside of these two brackets and it will need a bit of springing in to get it in position. So if we take one of the two short bolts, I'll just undo the nut. In the upper hole you'll see the square hole here. Pass the bolt through and through the highest of the two holes or three holes in the side bracket and we'll just loosely attach the nut. Okay. Now at this point I can do exactly the same on this side, put the small bolt through, squeeze it into position and loosely attach the net. Okay, it's at this point that I'll need to use my 13mm spanner and I can do up the net on the inside of the bracket. Now I'm not going to do it extremely tight, just so that it nips it at this point. And I'll do exactly the same on the other side. Don't over tighten these at this point. Just most of the way there. And that still allows me to bring the handle up into its operator position. Now this handle can be set at two heights. For the taller user, you would want to fasten the bolt from the outside towards the in, in the lower hole. And for the shorter operator, such as myself, in the higher hole or further up the handle. So I'm going to put it in the higher hole. So yes, in the lower hole, or the hole for the lower operator, from the outside going in, and pass that bolt through there. Now I need to take the washer and the nut, put the washer on on the inside, And do up the little black hand wheel and I can't actually screw it up tight the so same again on the other side the same hole pass the bolt through washer on and fasten the black nut okay at this point I can just tighten down, without overdoing it, the two nuts that we fitted earlier. Okay, that's the lower handle fitted. So having fitted the lower handle, you can 
take the final two nuts and bolts out of the bag and just disassemble them temporarily. These ones work in the opposite direction and go from the inside out. So I'll just place that one there. Now I need to take the upper handle, being careful not to catch any of the wires. And keeping this wire out of the way, I'll just pass it over that nut. Pass the bolt in on this side. Bring it down into position. I can hold it there. Get a washer. And fit one of the nuts. I'll just come around that side. Same again, a washer. And the final nut. We can do these up firmly. You will notice that the control cables are passing over the top of this bar. That is the correct way. It is possible to feed the upper handle through and to connect them with these cables passing underneath this bar. If you should do this and in the future fold up the handles, there's a high likelihood that you're going to damage these control cables. So this is the way to do it with the cables above this bar. So a little bit of tidying up now. You'll see on the lower handles of these plastic clips, there's two on this side, one on this side. You can just bring your cables over here, push the plastic clip down over them. And that locks them securely in place out of the way of the grass bag. I can do exactly the same on this side. I'll have one here. second one down here and there we are nice tidy cables that are going to be out of the way of the grass bag the next thing to do is going to be to attach these two cables here to the handles on the top there is a little instruction here separate I'll just put that out of the way and demonstrate it this upper one of these two cables goes to this handle at the front and the lower one to the handle at the back and to fit them you simply pop the lower handle out of its hole, put the little cable through the hole in the handle, and then pop it back in position. Exactly the same with the top one. Pop it out, bring it down, put it in through the hole, and back into the handle. And they're now operating correctly. There is a possibility that your battery may need charging before use. Occasionally there is charge in the batteries, but it's quite possible that you may need to charge it. So this may be a good time to mention it. The unit does come with this battery charger. It simply plugs in to the side of the battery box here, and then it will charge from a 13 amp outlet. Probably charge for around five hours to charge the battery fully. Once it's charged, Remove the charger from the outlet and remove the little jack plug from the battery casing. Next we're going to add engine oil to the engine. Now it is vital that you do this before even attempting to start the lawnmower as it's delivered to you with no oil as it says here on the label. So to remove the dipstick simply unscrew it anti-clockwise probably a quarter turn and it will just lift out. You'll notice on the end of the dipstick that there is a cross hatched area here on the end and the letters L at the bottom line and H at the top line. We need to fill through the filler tube with engine oil which is 15W40 engine oil up until it reaches the H line at the top of the cross hatched area. Now pour the engine oil in slowly as it will take a while to run down into the engine and check it several times as you're filling it to watch it coming up to the high mark. An alternative to the 15W40 is this Hyundai 4-stroke SAE30 petrol engine oil. 
These bottles are readily available from our parts department and this is the oil I'm going to be using. I've got an appropriate jug here and I'm just going to gently pour it in down through the filler neck taking it nice and slow so that it doesn't back up in the tube. You can see it coming to the top, just take it easy. There we go. I've probably poured about 400 mil in there now. I'm going to leave that for a few seconds to run down the tube or I will be dipping in to the engine oil in the tube and not what's in the engine and that will give me a false reading. So just give it a moment to go down and to dip the oil just push down to the top and back out again and I can see that's just above the low mark on my dipstick so I need to fit, fill with some more engine oil. Again, taking it gently. If you go too fast with this, it will come back up out of the top of the filler neck and leave you with a mess to clean up. Okay, so that's taken just about a complete 500ml bottle now. Again, I'll let that run down, I'll give it a chance. and dip it once more. It's looking about right, up to the H line. Try again. Yep. I'm actually just around the high line there. The other side shows it just below, but this shows it just above. So yeah, we're pretty much on the money there. So one more dip. On the H and on the H. Okay, so that's actually taken 500 millilitres of oil on this particular model. But yeah, the dipstick is there for a reason. Don't rely on the 500, it may take 550. And refit the dipstick by turning it clockwise that quarter turn. So that's the engine oil build. Let's move on to putting petrol in your lawnmower. The fuel filler cap is here. You simply rotate it anti-clockwise and pull it out of the way. Now using fresh unleaded petrol, it has to be fresh and just clean unleaded petrol, no additives, you can fill the fuel tank. I've got half a litre here, which should be more than adequate for this demonstration. And that should give me around half a tank. Okay, once you've filled it up, replace the filler cap, screwing on clockwise, and tighten it down. Always do this either outdoors or in a well-ventilated area, and obviously no sparks or naked flames. It's petrol we're dealing with here. Let's look at a few of the controls on your lawnmower. This front handle is the OPC lever, or Operator Present Control. It's basically an on-off switch. When you pull back the OPC lever, it basically enables the electric start function and it removes the grounding from the spark pack, allowing the engine spark plug to work. When you release this lever, it kills the start function and it kills the spark to the spark plug, thus stopping the engine. So that's the OPC lever. This rear lever engages the drive so that the lawnmower is self-propelled. So when you pull this lever forward, and this one back, you engage the drive and the engine will be running. To stop the lawnmower, simply let go of the drive, it will stop moving, release the front lever, which is the OPC lever, and the lawnmower will stop. The red button here is the push button start and your lawnmower does come with a spare push button. You can remove this push button when you're not using the lawnmower to stop any unauthorized use of the mower. 
and you simply pop it back in the hole. And as you can see, without the OPC lever pushed, this will not work. On the front of the engine here is this primer bulb. Let's think of it as a choke. For a cold start, you will probably need to push this in and out up to five times before attempting to start the mower. Once the mower is warm and has been running and you're you know, midway through cutting your lawn, you probably won't need to use it. But if it doesn't start, perhaps one or two pushes at most. So yeah, five pushes of this before starting a cold lawn mower. Final little bit of assembly. Um, the lawn mower, the basket part, has been disassembled from this frame for ease of transport. You'll see two plastic lugs on the sides. Fold those over the frame. Difficult for me to do while showing you this. And again, there's a long strip at the bottom. Again, needs to be fitted over the frame. And there we are. That's the grass bag assembled. To fit the grass bag, you'll see on the rear of the mower you have these two shiny metal bars. But on the grass bag itself, we have these two hooks, one either side. So to fit the grass bag, you simply lift up the rear flap, place the two hooks over the bars, and that's the grass bag fitted. Another little control on your lawnmower is this single point height adjusting system. By pulling the lever out, you can see it'll go at the bottom position here, and it can go up in steps incrementally by one, two, three, four more steps. So that's the lowest position. One more, one more, one more, right up to the top position. For the purposes of this, and to keep the lawnmower blade well up off my deck in here, I'm going to start it in the highest position. So this is going to be a cold start, so one, two, three, four, five. Pull back on the OPC lever and start the lawnmower. Release the lever, stops the engine. I'll just prime it probably two now because it's not very warm. Back with the OPC lever, start the engine. So to start your lawnmower. Should you have a flat battery, you can manually start the lawnmower. So I've just pulled out the pull cord, I'll just tuck it around the little pigtail. That puts the pull start handle in a convenient position. So again, it's fairly cold, it hasn't run for very long. I'll give it two pushes, pull back the OPC lever, and I can manually start the lawnmower. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. For more information on this or any of our other products, visit www.hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk. I've been Adrian, and happy gardening.